All right guys, it's Baz here from Game and Gem and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to paracord your gaming mouse. I'll be paracording the FK1 in this video but it doesn't matter what mouse you're using, the same principles apply. Um, I'll show you step by step how I do it, follow along and by the end of it you'll have a paracorded mouse. Let's jump into the video. All right guys, so the first step is to grab your flathead screwdriver. I recommend using a flathead because it helps get right underneath those mouse feet, which are a total nightmare to get off. Uh, try and place the head of the screwdriver underneath the mouse feet and kind of pull up, but be very, very gentle doing this. You don't want to damage them. Once you get that first bit off, I recommend using your hands and just very slowly pulling away from you. It's kind of like I'm pulling to my right here, um, just so it loosens the mouse feet. But it, if, if, if I pull up and if, if I pull towards me, it's going to crease it and you're going to render your mouse feet useless basically. So just be really careful here when, when you're pulling them. And then once you kind of get halfway through, it'll, depending on your mouse feet, it'll pop off kind of like that. And just continue pulling until the mouse feet's completely off. But as I say, take your time with this and go slow. It's not so much of a big deal if you have replacement mouse feet, then you don't need to be as careful as I am here. but. I'm showing it here for the sake of the video that you need to be careful when you're pulling them off and then kind of put them aside and make sure they don't, you know, fall and get dirty or anything. Um, same goes for the bottom mouse feet, it's the same, same, same process. Usually on the mouse feet, like in the Zowie here, you'll get little notches that will help you start peeling the mouse feet off and it'll also help avoid damage in the corners you might find on some mice that they don't have this so you have to be extra careful but on on the likes of the fk1 you can see the notch that will allow you to do this easily All right, so now that you've got the mouse feet off, you want to unscrew the mouse. Now, depending on the mouse that you use, the screws may be different. In this case, I'm unscrewing the FK1, so it has two screws at the top, two screws at the bottom. Usually the screws will always be underneath the feet of the mouse, so you should be able to find them easy enough. But the step's pretty straightforward. Just unscrew all the screws and put them aside, make sure you don't lose them, obviously. So once you've taken off all four screws and you're ready to separate the base from the shell, take your time doing this to avoid damaging the ribbon cable and to avoid things like the scroll wheel flying out or any other components, etc. Just take your time when you're pulling apart the mouse. It's obviously fairly delicate and you don't want to do any damage. As you can see, the FK1 has a ribbon cable, so you can detach it like I'm showing, but it's actually possible to paracord the mouse without detaching the ribbon cable, so I'd recommend doing that if you can. It can save you some time putting it back together at the end. Next, you want to grab a pair of pliers or use your fingers to pull off the old cable from the PCB. Make sure that you're applying equal pressure on either side of the socket head to make sure that you don't bend any of the pins or anything. Alright, so you'll notice on your paracord that you'll have two small heat shrinks. They're usually black, but it'll depend on the paracord that you've got. You want to drag the first one towards the end of your cable like I'm showing here and take a lighter or something to heat up the heat shrink with. You can even use a hairdryer and slowly apply heat all around the heat shrink so that it shrinks and tightens around the cable to provide support to the socket head. Just do this really slowly so that you don't apply too much heat and end up burning it. You only need to do this for a little while. Depending on the lighter that you're using, you might even need to take less time than I am here. So I'm just going to quickly speed this bit up so you can see how I do it and then we'll jump into the next section.
All right, nice one. You've heated up the heat shrink and it's looking pretty good. Now, I recommend just giving it a little pull back and forth to make sure that it's tight around the cable and that's it, you're good to go. Let's move on. All right, so now you wanna plug in your new power cord into your PCB. This allows you to line up the cable with the edges of your mouse so that you can get the second heat shrink lined up so that you know whereabouts the cable is gonna come out of your mouse. It's also now a really good time to actually test whether the mouse works. So you can plug this in like I'm showing just now with using two fingers on either side to apply equal pressure across the pins and then plug it into your computer and make sure that the mouse is still working, making sure that the cable's not faulty because you don't want to go to all this effort and find out that the cable's a dud basically. But next, as you can see, I am trying to line up the paracord with where the cable should come out. And you can see that I've dragged the second heat shrink towards the end of the mouse so that I can line up where on the cable I need to melt the second heat shrink to. You want to make sure that the second heat shrink, the start of it, is at the end of the mouse. All right, so now that you've lined up the second heat shrink with where it should be on the cable so that it's coming out of the mouse at that position, you want to melt it to that part of the cable. So you pretty much do the exact same thing as you did in the first step. Just apply heat slowly around the whole thing until it's tightly fitted and give it a little pull as well to make sure that it's tight and not moving. All right, so the next step is to grab your first clear heat shrink and pull it along towards the start of your second black heat shrink, as I'm showing you here. Just pull it along to where I've positioned it and you then want to do the exact same thing. Apply heat to the clear heat shrink so that it shrinks around the black heat shrink. Do this really slowly as these melt a lot faster and you kind of just want to keep positioning it and pulling it because sometimes these move a lot when you when you start to melt them. So pull it back towards the end like I'm showing here to make sure that there's a nice tight fit around the black heat shrink. And this will just make sure that your cable stays tight while it's inside the mouse and that there's no movement. So as you can see, it's getting smaller and smaller and you just want to apply heat very slowly around each part these melt really quickly, so just take your time with this. It's really simple, don't be scared about this part, it's really, really straightforward. At the end, just give it a little pinch, make sure that it's tight and it's sealed around the edges, and that's you pretty much done the hard bit. So this next part is probably actually the hardest part, so I lied to you, but uh, what you wanna do is plug the socket back into the PCB, and now you want to position the cable so that it's coming out of the mouse correctly. Now, depending on the mouse, this changes every single time. For example, the FK1 that I'm showing here, you can see the top right hand side screw is currently being, screw hole is currently being covered by the cable. So when you're Putting the cable in, be very be very aware of all of the screw holes to make sure that your cable isn't covering any of them. Now, I'm just doing this here to show you how not to do it, um, and you'll see me fix it later on. But you basically want to try and position the cable in a way that makes sense. Um, this is how I've done it for the FK1. You want to basically take it along the side of the mouse and then you want to pull the cable around the screw holes and then make sure that this small heat shrink is on the inside of the mouse and the black heat shrink is poking out. Also be very aware that the black heat shrink isn't pointing down because if it points down it's going to be rubbing against your mouse pad and that's going to be causing drag and well drags the whole point of having a power cord, you don't, want to, you don't want any cable drag at all. So make sure that when you're putting it in this part of the mouse, 
this part of the cable it's not pointing down and if anything pointing up to reduce any chance of the black heat shrink from grating against your mouse pad causing friction anything like that all right so i'm just going to speed up this last little bit so that you can see me kind of my process for positioning the cable and making sure that it's coming out of the mouse in the correct way again this change changes for every mouse but i'll give you an idea of how to do it All right, so that's me got the cable in the position that I want it. You can see it going around the top right hand screw hole this time. Now I'm just going to attach the shell and attach the ribbon cable and, and I'm going to bounce my scroll wheel against the desk and screw in the screw holes and add in the mouse feet. All right guys, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you found that useful. Your mouse is now power corded. You've not completely broken it. Um, if you found this useful, then please like and subscribe. And uh, let me know in the comments what, uh, what mouse is your number one at the moment. I'm interested to kind of hear what you guys are using. Anyway, that's it for now. See you guys in the next one.